Random starting off point. I'm not the only one that watches Shadow of Israfel all these years later, right? I just have this on. My childhood. Hello and welcome to episode 3 of the Doctor Who community show. Oh, it's good to be back! Before we get into the main show, I've got two things I would like to mention. Firstly, if I go onto my desktop here, you'll see I have this as my background, a picture of myself and my lovely girlfriend Gemma, drawn by the lovely Bo, who I have uh, promoted before. Her commissions are still open, so if you want something like this for yourself, give her a message, because it is worth the price. Also, she's just, she's just nice. Isn't that great when someone you like the work of is also a very nice person? What? <laughs> also, as you can see on screen, we have, after many people have asked, a Doctor Who community show Discord. The idea behind it is much like the show, a way of promoting yourself and others in a public space. And except this one, instead of the show, it's a bit more instantaneous, as opposed to waiting two weeks for me to say the name. Do some quick maths. 33 plus 6 is 39. Uh, 40, 41, 44, 45, 46, 47. That is pretty epic, but we can go bigger than that. The invite link is at the top of the description below, as well as the commissions thing for Bo, as well as everyone I'm going to mention in this video in chronological order. So if you want to join in that fun, so, without further ado, let's start the show. I just recorded the whole fan film section without the mic on. Here we go again! <laughs> the first project I want to mention is Dawn of a Brand New Age by creator T.B.O. Your name's weird, here it is. <laughs> it is a full 30 minute live action fan film following the character Harry Schwartz and... Sh no more spoilers. If you want to check it out, link in the description. Come on, there's probably more coming. What's yeah. wrong with those people? This is the second time today they've come after me. What the hell is going on? Keep quiet. Who are you? Um, Harry Schwartz. And who's your friend? Uh, I don't know. I don't think he really does either. Why do you need him? I have reason to believe he's not of this world. Next is one I am watching like a flipping hawk. Emperor of the Daleks by Dalek Seth. Dalek Seth sounds like the lost member of the cult of Skaro. Dalek Sek, Jast, Khan, Thay, Seth. It's one to watch because it's very different to the usual fare. First of all, it's going to be animated. I thought it was audio at first, but then they released this work in progress clip. We'll get to that. But also, the voice cast is quite spectacular. It features the likes of Miles Taylor of Tailored Vision as the 11th Doctor. Not that I'm uh, offended or anything that you didn't select me. Obviously my 11th Doctor is ass. anyway. It also features the lovely Alia as Amelia Pond. She really does get about a bit. It was kind of a joke last time, but seriously, she is in a lot. Quite right too though, she is. Terrific. Also, someone that I haven't featured yet is Batman March. Jesus Christ, his figure adventures from back in the day, the best. But he is in this as well, and I'm just gonna show you the teaser as well as the work in progress footage, and I hope you'll realize just why I'm keeping my eye on this so closely. Doctor, that voice, it sounded like, what the hell was that? Just where are we? Oh, fine. But it's now two beaches you owe me. Proposing? Oh no. I would at least expect a couple of dates first. Something has gone wrong with time, Amy. This was meant to have happened in my past, but it hasn't. Time has gone all wibbly wobbly. Humanoid intruders, stay where you are. Hello there, boys. I'm back for another cuppa. I am the Emperor, and I will judge you. Davros needs to live in order for a series of events to take place that will shape this galaxy for years to come. Yeah! 
Okay, Doctor. This is not Florana. You promised me a beach. <sighs> Doctor, step out here now. Where is my beach? Did you see that animation clip? It reminds me of Doctor Who The Adventure Games, remember those? In a good way. And, again, with a voice cast like that and the ambition this creator is showing, Go and check him out. Go and give him a sub. The popular MB and Homeland are back with another series of fan films. Episode one of which being called Evocation. I believe they're one of the more popular fan film creators out there, so chances are you already know them. But who cares? <laughs> they're great. They deserve a bit of promotion. On a side note, a quick shout out to Robin Hope or the Ginger Doctor for the thumbnails that he creates for MB and Homeland. I mean, if you've seen any of them, they are terrific. So shout out to you, my boy. You were following me, remember? Earlier in the woods. I don't need to answer your questions, little man. Oh, I think you do. Because you know who I am. And you know that it's a very dangerous idea to cross me. Is that some sort of a threat? Yes. I have no idea who you are. Yes, you do. I can see it in your eyes. And finally, we have Scourge of the Daleks. I wonder if they'll ever run out of the Of the Daleks uh, episode titles, like if they just give up and like, Teapot of the Daleks or something like that. I mean, Christ, just earlier we had Emperor of the Daleks. Uh, recently they released a clip for, or a teaser, for Evil of the Daleks, that animation, which are pre-ordered. Anyway, sorry, Scourge of the Daleks. It is by the fabulous Sea Devil Lagoon and Check it out! Those Time War Dalek voices are terrific, by the by. Uh, not to mention the lighting and the animation that always goes into these figure adventures. Terrific job! Here's a clip! Emergency! Life signs approaching our location! Make all speed! I will assist! Firepower set to low! Before I move on to audio, I'd like to mention something about fan films in general. I think I hit this point a couple of episodes ago, but it's something I want to keep mentioning. There is always an element of cringe, especially when you do live action stuff uh, with fan films. I mean, whether you're young, you're old, this is always something that's going to pop up in the comment section, right? If you make these fan films or audios or what have you, this can apply anywhere, know that even if it is a bit cringe, the fact that you are making something like this, the, the fact that you can get these out there, whether it be 30 minutes or five minutes or what have you, it is impressive. It takes an incredible amount of effort to make fan films, to uh, put together cosplays, audio productions, uh, creating art. No matter what the comments you get, know that you will always have an equal spot on this show if you want it, and that you are amazing for getting something out there. Sorry if this is a bit all over the place, I've not scripted this one. <laughs> anyway, moving on! So, audio! I have made a conscious choice to not have a lot of things to mention after the gargantuan episode that was episode two. <laughs> so, I've only got three projects to mention here. Number one is the weirdest thing ever. It is a Love and Monsters song created by Kane Unable. Now you may know him already from his poorly animated uh, series one video he did, which was the funniest thing. It was like Doctor Who poop on crack. I mean, maybe not as weird as when on Twitter he dressed up as the Absorbaloff and danced around. I dare not show that clip. <laughs> but he is a genuinely funny and very talented editor and voice actor, so definitely go and give the song a listen. Here's a clip. After watching that, you're either terrified or you're interested, and I think you should be both. Next is Time Fixers by Hooniverse Productions. It is chapter one of what I assume is multiple chapters, uh, read like a story. So if that's something you're interested in listening to, go check it out. It's got some tarans in it. What's not to love? As she tapped the doctor on the back, 
something went off in his head. A vision. He saw the mutated Daleks. He saw Skaro. No, wait. He saw an Earth that had been transformed into the hollow, lifeless, mutated planet that was Skaro. And this sent him into shock. He collapsed. And finally, Thomas Ahern has created the truth behind the lie. Narrated by Alia again, it is a rare crossover between Doctor Who and the never-ending story. Basically, if you like the timeless child, there's an that. <laughs> but then she felt a strong gust of wind and opened her eyes. She saw what appeared to be some kind of portal materialize before her. It was a brilliant shade of purple and she felt it beckoning to her. As she approached it, she discovered that the Orin had turned to dust in her hands. Do you remember when I mentioned the Adventure Games last segment? Well, I thought I'd revisit, yeah, I thought I'd revisit that game after so many years and do a little let's play. My narration. So here's my experience with Doctor Who the Adventure Games all these years later. Enjoy. Doctor, should I come with you? No, Amy. It's too dangerous. I can't afford your poor following. Are you looking for a slop? Too expensive to animate. Stay here, Amy. I'll go and collect the items. Can't be too difficult. That's what you said about collecting the character cards. I will find the yellow jelly baby. I must collect those items for Amy. If I can't find them, she will be a bit poorly for a day. I must collect those items for Amy. If I can't... Homo Reptilia. Best to be cautious. If only there was a clear way of seeing when I can and can't pass. Best to be cautious. So, he's probably dead. Why do I feel a bit poorly all of a sudden? Yep, we're back in the mirror dimension, which means it is time for art. I've got some more terrific artists to show off, so let's just jump into it. Firstly, there is Tinted Who. This is one of those coloration Twitter accounts, the ones who take the black and white and add the colour to it, and... He does a terrific job! One of the particular pieces I want to show off is a video. Usually, you know, you get your, your standard pictures and that, but no, this one takes it above and beyond and does a clip from The Mind Robber. I only recently watched The Mind Robber. It's weird. Definitely go and follow Tinted Who as well as all the other artists I'm going to be mentioning. Next is Once Upon a Spark on Instagram. This creator does some beautifully cartoony art, including some Doctor Who ones! Who would have guessed? I can totally imagine this creator making like a comic strip with this kind of style. Obviously that's a lot of work, but still, you get my point. They are lovely. Next is a style I haven't really seen a lot of online, and that is from creator... Summer Artist! <laughs> and I mean just look. Seriously, just look, it is gorgeous. I mean, this one in particular of um, the 10th Doctor and Wilf is my favorite, and Christ! <laughs> the effort that goes into making something like this must be immense, so definitely go and give them a follow. Next is T Dalek for two reasons. Number one, his style is adorable, look. I love it. I love happy Daleks. I mean, Daleks in general are great, but happy Daleks, it's fun. But also because he made little Rory smile, just, just look at the video. I'm calling the Dalek and my whisper and my and my sing and me and my and my 
And if you make the Dobson smile, God damn it, you're gonna get featured. God, I need a haircut. <laughs> Next is one I don't really know how to say. What is it? Like, Dalius? Dalias. It, it's got a lot of eyes. Dalius. Let's just go with Dalius. <laughs> For this particular piece of CG art with a TARDIS created by the glowing one. It is fantastic. Look at it. Look at the polish on that. Giving TARDIS man a run for his money. Aiden, you better watch out. But I mean, come on, it's the TARDIS and the TVA from Loki. It's it's a must, right? Like, I think um, Katie Haynes did some TikToks of 13 in the TVA. It's just right for a crossover, that, isn't it? I am Loki, of Asgard. And I'm the Doctor of Gallifrey. Why do you say the place you're from? It's weird. I do like your lights though. Very, uh, very professional with their uh, folders on them. And lastly, there is Geo Vanta who replied to the challenge last week, the art challenge. Specifically with this piece of all of the Doctors all together and Christ. I mean, admittedly, it is hard to mess up putting all the Doctors in one piece because that is an inherently cool thing to do. Uh-huh. But, I mean, it's incredible, the style, the, the, ah! <laughs> As someone who's not an artist, it's hard for me to keep finding new words and ways to describe pieces, except for just going, yeah, look at it! But, uh, it's excitement, I love seeing stuff like this. Brilliant, from all of the artists. But just go and give all of these artists a lovely follow and let them know Jack sent ya. So, turns out there is a whole Lego Doctor Who ecosystem on Instagram and Twitter and such, so here are three of those creators, because why not? Also, Luke Lane put me up to this. Firstly, there's Brick Pandorica, mentioned last week. He's great, he released more um, sets over the last couple of weeks, and I love them, including this fourth Doctor one. Next, Kaiju Builds, look at this Lego Dalek. Lego Dalek is cool, yeah! Next! Finally there is Luke's toy box, which is Luke Lane. Yeah, he put me up to the idea, and the cheeky <laughs> has one of his own! I wonder why he put me up to this idea! <laughs> anyway, go and follow all three. I'm back to Calm Jack now. Calm Jack, I promise. I promise! <laughs> Let's be honest, if you're in the Doctor Who community in some way, chances are you've done some form of cosplay. Whether it be for time fracture, conventions, or your own personal fun and bounce, we all do it, and let's show off some of the ones who post. I personally have never cosplayed. Ignore this. Firstly, there's the 13th Doctor cosplayer, Yanachi. I do love that with the 13th Doctor, just is as a whole, it has allowed for so much inclusivity with uh, cosplays. Because obviously, if you are a woman, the only choices you had before that was either gender bending the Doctors, which is always fun, admittedly, and or uh, companions. Don't get me wrong, companions have a wicked style. For example, like um, Amy and Clara spring to mind as some of the best fashionistas of the companion world. <laughs> but with the 13th Doctor, that opens the door. It's inclusive, and that's great. But yes, go and check her out. Lee Roberts Rocks, or Lee Clever Rocks, does very specific cosplay. I've seen this cosplay around a lot online for a long time, and for good reason, because wow! It's specific in the sense that you wouldn't think to do Eleventh Doctor in Nightmare and Silver with the Siberian thing on his face, but... Stop it, Plane! I'm trying to do promotions! But yeah, go and check out this cosplayer. It is amazing what they do. I think uh, they also did a Borderlands like crossover one, which just looks even better. Here's one I continuously mention, and again, promise I'm trying my best not to play favourites, but Abby of Traken. With her making TikToks ranging from lots of different characters, that calls for lots of different cosplays. Again, can't relate. But here, look at them. Look at them all. See if, tell you what, here's a challenge for you. See if you can guess who every single one is. Post in the comments who you think every single one is. If you get it right, I will pin your comment to the top of the comments. I will pin it if you were the first one to guess all of them right. And if no one can do it, then I'll just consider me the winner. Even though I'm pretty sure I don't know all of them myself. <laughs> I'll ask Abby, it's fine. Speaking of, Abby's just a lovely person. She played Charlie uh, for a quick skit in episode two. Uh, if you wanted to know who that was, that's Abby of Kraken. Go and check her out. Lovely person. Oh, how did I forget? I uh, appeared in one of her podcasts recently. Uh, we did a podcast together and it devolved into utter chaos. Uh, if you are under 18, you are actually not allowed to, to, um, to watch it. She age-gated it because... <sighs> If you ever wanted to see me go completely off the rails, check out the TT Productions podcast. It is hilarious. <laughs> Who's your favourite Doctor? 
Oh, now there's a question. Mm. Mm. I'll be up. It, it changes depending on what I've watched. Like, um, I mean, I was always a tenant diehard for the longest of times. Um, but oh, at the moment, pro- <laughs> this is pro- at the moment. It's either McCoy because Ace and McCoy are the best, uh, or Picaldi. Pic- uh, Pic- <laughs> Uh, Keita Picaldi. Of course. He's my favourite. Yeah, I don't know, just something about his doctor. He is just the most doctory. He's mm. up there with Tom Baker where you look at him and you go, yeah, I'd buy that. Next is Sir Jedi Sentinel or Marcus Cotton. You probably know him from a lot of audio productions, but he does cosplay too. Specifically, I wanted to mention this fourth Doctor one he did because look at him. Look at that, that is incredible, isn't it? He also did a 12th Doctor one too, but I, I think this is just my favourite, so I had to show it off. Also, I mentioned it before, but if you need a more Doctor voice, let's go. Next is a relatively unknown creator. You might know her as my girlfriend. Gemma Whittington uh, was the first to post in the cosplay text channel of the Discord, and look at her. Look at her, is ace. Good daddies! I love her. Don't you love her? I love her. She's the best. Everybody say that Gemma is the best in the comments because it's true. <laughs> you don't even know that I'm complimenting you to this camera. You're right over there. Fool. And finally, I wanted to end on a big high. Davros. You know it? You, you wouldn't imagine there's a lot of cosplays of him though, but because it, it's tricky. It's a tricky cosplay to do. Well, Davros Dalek Sanctuary on Twitter has made this cosplay his B-I-T-C-H. Yeah, bitch. Look, if the show can get away with saying it, so can I. Do I even need to say it? Look at it! And you think that's good enough? You think he, you, you'd stop there? No? If you know the audio Jubilee, chances are you love that cover as much as I do with the stained glass Dalek. He's created that in Davros chair form. I'm just gonna let it play. Seriously, it is incredible. There's even like hydraulics on it. There's switches, there's lights. I'm just gonna watch. It's, wow. I get, I, I must say, I think I say this all the time because I'm, 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 what's the word? Vain and needy. I, what I wouldn't give to ride around in that chair. Wouldn't that be so fun? But yes, go and check him out. His creativity and worksmanship is one to be acknowledged and loved. <laughs> Anyone want a melon? So, I'm trying to cut this up, but I can't figure out how to do it, because look how big it is. Look, it's the, the half of it is the size of my head. Like, I love watermelon. I love it, and this will all be eaten, but it's not going to fit in my fridge. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of the cleverest way of doing this. I think I'm going to cut it sort of like that on both sides. I think that's the most logical, but I, I like using it as a bowl. <laughs> Desperate times call for desperate measures. So here we go. I really shouldn't be trusted with a knife like this, but here we are. Oh, very nice. For the love of God, don't chop your fingers off. Yeah, I've got a cutting board and I'm not using it. Ah! Good, all right, it works. I mean, I know I'm gonna eat one of these now either way, because I am hungry. I've only had a chocolate muffin for breakfast and it's 12 o'clock. Uh, question is, do I share this melon with Gemma or do I eat it all myself? Oh, this one's being a bit tough. Oh! Here we go, here we go. Now we're cooking with gas. Conveniently. <laughs> right, now I've got to wrap them up. <laughs> clean film, clean film. Oh, bugger, I think I might be running out of clean film. <laughs> oh, it's all leaky. Can't imagine why. Well, it mostly worked. You know what I call that? Good enough. Let's see. Oh. Yep, fridge still broken, good stuff. Okay, I'll put one there. Do you see my issue? Yeah, you didn't think you'd get this in the community show, did ya? Did ya? All right, another slice down. Good, good, good. We're doing well, doing well. I know this is the meat shelf. Yep, it killed me for this. Doesn't help that yesterday was the big weekly shop. If you live on your own, chances are you do a big weekly shop yourself. The fridge is at its fullest right now. Don't worry, Jack can fix that. I'm all sticky. Don't take that out of context, like that. That's this skit done. Why did I put this in the community show? I don't know. You can go away now. And finally, we end with other shout outs. Hey, you thought I didn't have an interview this time? Haha, <laughs> guess again! Saving to the end this time, I hid it. Before we get into this one though, last week's interview did very well. 
not in the audience retention again, but the full interview got over 100 views really quickly, so that's the power of Katie Haynes, I guess. But let's just push that interview aside because we've got a new one. Last week I promoted a fan game titled Forgotten Time, and after doing that, the uh, developer, Command Moose, over in Australia, got in contact and said he'd be up for an interview. I will admit all the fun stuff happened after we ended the recording, because we just started chatting as per, and he, uh, he's a lovely bloke. Fantastic project, and I hand it over to past me, because I actually recorded this well in advance this time. I'm liking the t-shirt on the TV behind you. That's the first thing Thank I can you. see. <laughs> I totally didn't like spend five minutes taping it up there because uh, I realized <laughs> I couldn't, you couldn't see the bottom of it. You're not aware of Doctor Who's greatest villain, Skongo. Oh, you, you want to get up. It's actually an inside joke with um, a, a meme Doctor Who group. It's essentially just a photo of like one guy with his nose squished down. Um, and then it was a way to battle people who are really elitist, like saying, oh, you haven't watched the classic series, you're not a true fan. So this is, yeah, this is the biggest classic series villain of all. And if you haven't heard of Skongo, you're not a true fan. Um, oh, well, damn. Well, I'm yeah. glad I'm a true yeah. fan now. Davros, Daleks, move aside. I think we have oh, found the best. I did like Minecraft Doctor Who stuff where I was like, yeah, I'll show my face and stuff. And so for eight, that took for ages to get that right because yeah. there's just so much out there. I think that's a um, rite of passage doing Minecraft Doctor Who, isn't it? You oh, yeah. That stage where you're like not quite confident to do live action stuff. So you're like, I play Minecraft, so does everybody else. Let's do that. Yay. I was, I was involved in a lot of the mods. So yeah, that was. Oh, Oh, really? My introduction. I'll talk about it more in the actual, like when we do the proper stuff. I've got Audacity up and I've just hit recording on my side. So I'll just three, two, one. Hopefully that will be enough for you to, to go through there. Yeah. So you should have like a nice 1080p of me here. I'm very picky about how I sound. So am I. Yeah. That's why I do all the different voices instead of my own. I loved your Peter Capaldi. The episode zero, just him jumping out of nowhere to say trans rights, brilliant. When I write the script, I'm either very, very picky or I do whatever mm -hmm. springs to mind first. Trans rights! Yeah. So this light is just blinding me here. If I don't have it, this it's just very... Dumb. Oh, yeah. The light that I've got here, um, but I've got it set so I can just change its color. Here we go. There we go. So I can, I can have a gamer room. And to just have that going. I'm here with Clayton, who is Hello. the main developer behind the Doctor Who fan game Forgotten. What well, I've literally just. <laughs> You've forgotten. 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 I've forgotten, forgotten. <laughs> forgotten time. Yeah. I just realised my microphone's all the way over here. I should bring it. Is that better? <laughs> Where did the idea, uh, the idea for Forgotten Time come from? Uh, pretty much just years of me developing and doing stuff because I, I started off in Minecraft as a lot of people have and I did like a lot of Tata stuff and then it eventually went to sort of helping out the modding community of it. There's a mod called the new Tardis mod um, and that just adds just a bunch of Tata stuff and I always wanted to add like a bit of story to it and then I realized well if I want to do something serious I want to switch to like an actual game engine and try and develop something so that's where Forgotten Time uh, sort of came from. How long so far have you been working on the uh, on the game? Oh, that's a good question. If you want to be technical, I guess the first version was like 2018, where I was just making a sort of like a Tata simulator. That went on for about a month until I got bored. Um, and then I picked it up again, <laughs> probably about uh, end of last year. I, th I want to say it was about end of last year. And I was in a group call with just a bunch of these like modelers and I just thought, well, it'd be cool to give it a go. And so that's where it's come back now. Probably about, uh, this is seven months, I think. Um, on and off, on and off. With any project, I suppose, you can't work on it all the time. It would drive any man insane. Yeah, although it would be nice just to have like five days a week dedicated to doing something, but um, no, life gets in the way of that. What's the rough plot of the game? I saw your post about a Butterfly One prequel episode. Yes, so um, the idea for this is that you're playing as the Doctor. Essentially, you are a part of this sort of like time fractured event. Uh, I can't use the word time fracture because obviously that's that's already a thing. But essentially, there's this crack in time caused by this outside of the timeline uh, casino that specializes in timeline gambling. And you being the doctor, of course, you get yourself stuck involved in it. Um, and being there causes a crack within the entire timeline of the universe. So it's your job to Very fix these cracks. Yes, I love a good Moffat story. So there's a lot of stuff 
that um, I want to do with it, but at the moment it's looking at two episodes. Uh, this sort of prequel episode, which is episode one, um, and then episode two being a Dalek story. Oh yeah, I've seen all these yeah. Dalek posts, especially those videos of the tests. <laughs> I'll, I'll get to yes. it, but I, I awesome. love it. Will it be a voice acted game or will it be more of a silent protagonist type dealio? <sighs> That's a good question. I've been I've been battling it. What I wanted to do with it was that because a lot of people are like, well, if you're making a Doctor Who game, they want to be whatever Doctor they want, whether it's the second Doctor or you're playing, you know, 13. So a big thing that I wanted to do was to try and create a silent protagonist of the Doctor so you could pretty much put any Doctor into it. So whether that's, you know, you want to play as 12, it can be there for you. If you want to play as Dominic's purple Doctor, there's even the potential for that as well. I talked to a few people about it when I was first concepting the idea and they were just rushing with ideas of how it would fit in the Doctor's timeline for everybody. Oh. <laughs> to do. So I'm like, brilliant, that's exactly what I'm trying to go for. But if there is dialogue, then it will be more text-based, like a three-option choice type deal. Well, if you ever need a uh, Doctor voice actor, I mean, I'm oh, absolutely going to be available. Yeah. Absolutely. On, on the more technical side, what hmm. software do you use to make the game? Originally, we were using the Unity game engine, because that's what I was most familiar with, and that was at the start of this year. And then I was pretty much enticed into Unreal Engine just by a few screenshots that someone posted, and I rather foolishly went, you know what, I'm just going to pick everything up and throw it into that. But at the moment, it's being developed in Unreal 5, which is a like a pre-production staging of the new engine of Unreal. So we get a bunch of awesome stuff. Um, there's Lumen, which is their new lighting system. So right, it's sort of like... Like ray tracing except not uh, I still need to look into it a bit more um, but it just makes anything that I put into the game no effort at all look beautiful so I'm very happy with that so far it was literally turning on button from between engine <laughs> versions which is amazing but I wouldn't be here without like the amazing people who made those models the glowing one Harry Tom Tom the witch um, Dalius as well some awesome people who have just you know, put their sort of time into it and um, yeah I wouldn't be here without them the next thing's not really a question but Again, getting back to the Dalek stuff, the two I, I think I saw were the death screen one, where the Dalek's chasing and shooting at you. And the yes. other one where it's like a sort of a square, you're running around where the Dalek sort of spotted you. Both of them, I can just imagine like either whether it be playing it or in VR or what have you, it would be terrifying. Just watching the video, like how dark it is and the, the lights of the Dalek Eye Stalk following you and you can only see the light. It looks genuinely yeah. incredible. Why, thank you. Yeah, it. I think I've spent about three months at the moment on those Daleks and it's still rather, still a little janky. But um, I, the biggest thing is I want to make them feel alive and like have those moments where you may be just hiding under a desk and it rolls in, stops, looks around and goes, yeah, there's nothing here and continue. But and alien isolation. Moment. A little bit. I, I've had a bit of inspiration from that. Um, so I'm hoping that I can bring at least something like that to the table with it. Just give me yeah. one second. It started raining. No problem. It rained is pouring through my window. <laughs> Who are some of the people that you've been able to work with on this project? Yeah, just some amazing sort of uh, lesser known people. Um, the glowing one, Harry, he, uh, everything he, this guy does is amazing. Um, I approached him um, pretty much at the same time as everyone else really. And there was a point in time where maybe there would have been Dalek mutants being able to be seen. And he said, oh, let me see what I can throw together. And it's the most gross thing I've <laughs> ever seen. Terrifying just the amount of details he put into it. He and another guy, Tom, which I mentioned earlier, uh, they collaborated um, with some rather uh, dodgy sketches that I did uh, to bring our custom TARDIS and screwdriver to life. And it's like magic what these people do. Yeah, I would not be here without them. And then Dale, uh, Dalius, he has been working on the interior on and off, G giving them pretty much nothing. And they've just brought these amazing things to life. And I'm so glad that I get to 
take their stuff and and show it off in the best way that I can. Absolutely, it's uh, mm. and definitely go and follow these people as well as Clayton for mm. the uh, ongoing development of the game. I've just been fascinated by everything that's been coming out with it. What sure. about the game that you have made so far? Would you say you're most proud of or most excited to share with uh, the audience? I'm gonna say those Daleks. Rewrote them about five times so far. <laughs> I've always wanted to make them feel alive, and it was rather a challenge at first because I thought, well, you could just put a Dalek in the game, and it would just kind of move around, you know, make it look left and right, it'll be fine. But then realizing how Dalek like, movements is in the TV show, like for a Dalek to shoot you, they've really got to be set up at a certain point to like look nice and shoot but if you're giving a player like to be shot at any sort of angle it's trying to get their behavior to not you know not only react to the player but then feel like it's a dalek and it sounds believe it looks believable so that's been what I've been most proud of, what's elevated even more, and I can't believe I didn't mention his name, but Joe Vivas, who voices the Daleks in the uh, Bugger series, uh, that list of like pretty much comedic Dalek voiceover stuff. I approached him and said, hey, would you mind doing some voices? And he just knocked it out of the park. I sent him maybe 10 or so lines and I got about 95 or something <laughs> back. So, uh, um, or, and that's not even dialogue or anything. That's just reaction based stuff. It's yeah, the, the Daleks at the moment are like, the best thing about it all. Well, thank you yeah. again for this uh, for this chance to interview you, Clayton. It was very kind no of problem. you from across uh, multiple oceans and countries we were able to speak. <laughs> Power of Zoom. <laughs> Power of Zoom. Would have been Discord, but Discord doesn't yeah. like me these days. Uh, who does? <laughs> oh, sorry, that was rude. <laughs> wow. oh, I, I meant to say who well, likes Discord. Screw this. I meant, to, I meant to say who liked Discord. <laughs> no, screw it. Cancel him. Hashtag yeah. cancel Clayton. Oh. Commander Moose is over party. Yeah, can't <laughs> wait for it. <laughs> I can now add Australia to the list of countries I have dominated in this show. This is becoming quite the globetrotter, isn't it? I've done the likes of Katie and members of Spectral Horizons from various states in the US of A. I've done Australia now, I've done the UK. Uh, Bo, uh, the artist, is in the Netherlands. Wow! But yes, thank you again, Command Moose, for the interview. I can't say it normally. Uh, for the interview, and definitely go and check out the fan game. Uh, watch its progress because it's incredible. Next is Clacker the Geek. Specifically, he wanted to mention his unboxing playlist. The first one I saw, the title was like Sexy Unboxing. So if you wanted an idea of the tone, <laughs> look no further than that title. But yes, go and check out him. He also does um, comedy sketches as well, I believe. So it's definitely a creator to, to, to watch. So disc one, Terror of the Autons, the season opener. Um, yeah, I, I, I've watched this one before. It's all right, never been one that I've loved, but maybe a rewatch will, you know, help me love it a bit more. Then disc two, The Mind of Evil, a story which I've never watched before, but I have the DVD of, but I've just never, I've never watched it for some reason. I recently tweeted out, but recently as in I, when I filmed this, not recently, when, anyway, I recently tweeted out my love for Gruntly the Ogron. Gruntly the Ogron is a sort of roleplay account uh, from the perspective of this Ogron. And it's comedy gold. <laughs> I don't know, it's one of those wholesome accounts where you, you watch all of the tweets are just funny. You can't help but love him. If you don't follow him on Twitter already, please fix that. He is, he, he just seems funny as well. <laughs> he replied to my tweet. It, very funny, go and check him out. I don't know how long this episode's gonna be, but I feel like it's gonna be one of the shorter ones. So apologies if that's a bit of a disappointment, but I needed to correct the mistakes of last episode because Christ, it was stressing me out. <laughs> I mean, life itself has been stressing me out like a like mad recently, so I didn't want this to be part of that, and it isn't now. I will definitely be scripting the next one though because uh, improvising only gets me so far. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you went and uh, seeked out some of the people I've mentioned. <sighs> I'm always exhausted after these, like I might be standing or sitting and talking, but I put a lot of effort in. <laughs> I hope it comes across. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in episode four. Ta-ta! Ta-ta!